Thanks, Antonio, and thanks uh, to the organizer for allowing me to speak. So I'm going to I'm going to be talking to you about uh, what we were up to at uh, at our Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy, IDEA for short, and uh, within the context uh, of my project, which I like to call HIPPO in particular. So uh, as we have uh, seen a couple of times uh, during the course of the conference, uh, and as Ray nicely put together in a paper last year, uh, we are seeing uh, a renewed interest uh, in radio astronomy service, partly because uh, some 20 years ago, and VSS and first, I mean, uh, uh, grappled I mean, with the low-hanging fruits, I mean, by detecting, I mean, the first uh, uh, couple of million uh, brightest radio sources in the sky. Since then, I mean, uh, technological hurdles, I mean, have conspired uh, uh, against uh, creating more ambitious service. So a lot of the effort has been going uh, on in uh, uh, carrying out deeper service of the sky. Now we are at the stage where the technical capabilities allow us to go deeper as well as wider. And uh, we are seeing, I mean, a flurry of different uh, uh, services, including the Lofer survey that Rafael beautifully showed earlier. So this comes uh, at no negligible cost in terms of data. So the, the radio data glut that uh, we will be seeing over the next uh, 10, 20 years, I mean, is uh, loosely captured by this uh, diagram. The important thing, I mean, for us in, uh, in, uh, at IDEA is that uh, uh, the increase in, uh, in data rates uh, in radio astronomy I mean, will largely be driven by instruments on South African soil. And uh, that's uh, uh, the reason for, uh, for, our, uh, for our institute and for a lot of development in South African astronomy lately. Of course, uh, the, the final uh, um, objective is uh, to create a 2,500 uh, fiber-connected dish antenna instrument, which we call the SKA, in uh, the extended, I mean, Southern African region. And uh, our first step, what we call, I mean, phase zero of SKA, uh, is Mirkat in South Africa, which uh, uh, is uh, made up of 64 uh, parabolic dishes with single pixel fields that is uh, constructed uh, on the, at the SKA uh, South African site and that is meant for incorporation into uh, the SKA phase one. Uh, it's recently started operations and uh, is that so? Okay, it's recently started operation and it will operate for five years as a standalone, purely South African instrument. Hence our great interest in, in being ready, I mean, for maximizing the, the science output of the telescope. We've been uh, uh, inaugurating it uh, a couple of months ago. I mean, it's been effectively completed uh, uh, as of uh, the end of April in 2018. And I mean, for the uh, radio astronomers within us, I mean, uh, uh, Mirkat is effective. I mean, a combination of JVLA, B, C, and D configuration, because we got lots of baselines, I mean, with very different sizes. And it's also actually uh, got a, a, a JVLA-like E configuration, which, uh, uh, well, which increases the capabilities, I mean, with respect to the state of the art that, is, uh, that was offered by the JVLA until recently. Of course, we have a four times the field of view, which makes it a very powerful survey instrument. You might have seen uh, the first light image, as it were, I mean, uh, as part of the press release uh, a few weeks back. This is a beautiful image of the galactic center. It's uh, too sci-fi like, I mean, for, for comfort, I mean, for any astronomer, but it's, uh, I mean, I've seen it, I've seen it being reduced, I mean, at, uh, at the Mirkat office in, uh, in Cape Town, and it actually looks uh, mind-boggling, I mean, in the detail, I mean, that you can uh, get, I mean, in about the individual bubbles and filaments, I mean, at the galactic center. Uh, an interesting aspect, which I will not go into much in my talk, is that uh, we, we also have a slave optical telescope that is uh, operated from, the, from Sutherland, so not from the, uh, from the Carnarvon site where Mirkat is based, but from the, from the site where most optical telescopes are operated in South Africa. This uh, small telescope is called Mirlicht, and it's a prototype for, uh, a, for what I think is called the Black Gem Array and it's been built by the Netherlands, and it will be operating uh, um, in a continuous manner, I mean, by targeting the same field of the sky of Meerkat for five years. So this creates lots of opportunities for, uh, well, anything, I mean, from fast radio bursts and uh, follow-up, and, well, th basically this, uh, tr trying to figure out, I mean, uh, the nature of uh, radio transients uh, and uh, uh, through their optical counterparts. Uh, Last year, we revisited the Meerkat Science Program by reapproving, I mean, some uh, eight uh, programs, I think, that stretch, I mean, the vast uh, uh, um, variety of uh, radio science, both in continuous polarization and line emission. I'm particularly involved with the mighty Deep Continuum Imaging Survey of the Early Universe, which is targeting four large extragalactic fields. And uh, 
I am uh, currently employed by IDEA, which stands for Inter-University Institute for Data Intensive Astronomy. It, uh, it came about because uh, universities wanted to be more involved with, uh, with the actual exploitation of the, uh, of the telescope and uh, uh, the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory was more interested in actually delivering the telescope than uh, to do its science. So it's driven by SKA data processing, uh, data delivery and data mining, but it also leverages uh, the growing involvement in South, well, by South Africa in multi-wavelength projects. I mean, starting from the SALT South African Telescope to LSST, S and CTA, I mean, in which uh, South Africa is also involved. The, our machinery, I mean, is currently, uh, is currently uh, well, described here, and it's nothing, I mean, to, to write home about if you're into supercomputing. Uh, the interesting thing is that it will uh, uh, rapidly expand, I mean, to incorporate, I mean, the bulk of the Mirka data that is uh, rapidly flowing in, and uh, it will uh, uh, branch out uh, into a, a South African data intensive research cloud that will target, I mean, cross informatics uh, of all sorts. And this is important because we are effectively driving the, the agenda I mean, for South African cloud computing and big data science uh, within astronomy. Currently, we are a partnership of three uh, university partners, UCT, UWC, UP. SAP is an industry partner. And uh, well, we got some collaborations with IBM, Cisco on a, on a, few, on a few side projects of ours. Uh, I'll mention only a couple of things that we are, uh, that we are uh, uh, particularly strongly involved with. One is the SKE data delivery design. I mean, so basically we, we did produce uh, the Mirka data delivery system as a pathfinder, I mean, to what uh, uh, the requirements, I mean, of SKE phase one data delivery will be like. And uh, uh, I was meant to have something about visualization, which uh, I might have overlooked, but at any rate. Uh, this is our uh, user model, I mean, uh, that uh, is uh, based on uh, OpenStack uh, cl cloud-based uh, virtual machines. The, the user is over here. I mean, we are, you access uh, the virtual machines, I mean, with, uh, with Python notebooks, if you so desire, otherwise through SSH and Singularity Shell, I mean, uh, jobs running from the, from the command line and putting in the background, if you so desire and uh, the Jupyter Notebooks and associated software with a singularity definition file and the like are published on GitHub, I mean, for uh, cloning at federated data centers of uh, which, I mean, we're currently experimenting with the Netherlands and uh, with, uh, with the Indian Institute for, uh, for Radio Sciences. The, the general interface, I mean, and I will, I will show some of our, uh, some of our students' notebooks uh, tomorrow, I mean, during the hackathon, I mean, if somebody's interested, uh, is, uh, well, it's largely based on Jupyter notebooks. You can, of course, run jobs, I mean, in batch, in batch modes, I mean, using Slurm and other, and other techniques. Uh, we can, in principle, uh, dynamically launch uh, uh, virtual machines, I mean, on demand, although the current operational model is more about, I mean, static virtual machines that are assigned to projects, I mean, for months on end. For instance, my students uh, have got their own uh, virtual machine, which is basically made up of one of the node of the, of the cloud, and they do carry out, I mean, uh, experiments in parallel, I mean, five or ten, five or ten of them at a time. And that's uh, also the model for our, uh, uh, for our teaching uh, that uh, we do at UCT and UWC using the IDEA cloud, I mean, uh, to streamline the process of having the students access uh, large data sets uh, in the cloud. Uh, of course, uh, the, this is all about uh, uh, the, the infrastructure and the radio data. Uh, myself as an infrared, uh, uh, infrared and uh, now radio astronomer, I know all too well I mean, the limitations of radio sources. We've already seen this quote <laughs> last the other day. Of course, the radio spectrum I mean, is uh, relatively featureless, so it doesn't allow you to get much ratchet information. And we have been I mean, working with, uh, with Pepe's group I mean, uh, to to adopt these methods and uh, to uh, and to apply it, I mean, to some of our multi-wavelength data sets uh, uh, that we obtained, I mean, as part of our collaborations with uh, with EJO and uh, with our colleagues in Europe. Uh, of course, our our final aim is to try and make sense of the of the radio galaxies. And have, uh, as Ra Raf showed, uh, there have been uh, well, there are. Uh, uh, there's a huge number of varieties, I mean, shapes and sizes of radio galaxies. And so localizing them and making sense of them is, uh, uh, is a process that typically, I mean, required, I mean, many years of follow-up observations and the many hours, I mean, spent poring over the radio images. What we're trying to do is to, to, to streamline this process, to, to try, try to turn, I mean, this largely circular process of finding the peaks in radio emission, classifying them, bringing them together into some sort of... Uh, 
uh, agreed upon physical system made up of multiple radio peaks and identifying the counterparts uh, at multiple wavelengths uh, in a uh, uh, well in a unified project in a unified process. In order to do that, we need all the help we can get from uh, multi-wavelength data and. Uh, we are relying on the tools that we developed as part of a European Commission funded project that I was a project scientist for, which was called HELP. The general idea is that uh, uh, later this month, I mean, we will be releasing our first, I mean, fully public data release covering most of our fields and we'll be uh, thus producing uh, multi-wavelength surveys matched in uh, um, over more than 1,000 square degrees of the extragalactic sky that uh, Herschel has been observing. By using this data set and the tools uh, that we developed, we are going to try and move beyond, I mean, what HELP has been doing. So we'll be moving, we'll be moving a lot of the infrastructure and, uh, and develop it specifically, I mean, for the science exploitation of radio service on the IDEA cloud. This is a little, well, my little pet project uh, with, a, uh, suitably, with a suitable uh, African uh, acronym. And uh, the, the first steps I mean, that, we've been, that we've been carrying out I mean, over the last year was to create a Python-centric software container that contains I mean, all the Python software that you're going to need, plus a lot of the command line tools that uh, uh, astronomers I mean, at multi well, working on multi-wavelength data have needed so that uh, uh, you can uh, launch your own favorite uh, SWOR, pencil extractor, optical imaging pipeline I mean, from the command line, but then use it I mean, to generate the post stamps I mean, to create overlays uh, on top of the radio images and so on and so forth. We've been creating little, uh, little cutouts and contours pipelines I mean, from most public services in order to try and exploit I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the wealth of data that we get and possibly to do that uh, in real time. I mean, once uh, mere licked I mean, and mere cut triggers, I mean, uh, uh, a radio transient uh, detection. We've been working on some simple visualization annotation software that I will uh, describe uh, shortly. And uh, of course, classification in, uh, in a number of ways, including machine learning. So this is, uh, uh, again, a slide I wasn't expecting to see, but at any rate, the, uh, one, our, our, uh, our main aim is to try and classify uh, our radio sources uh, on the basis of the physical mechanism that uh, powers them and uh, where, uh, wherever possible to move beyond the binary classification between star forming galaxies and uh, AGNs uh, to try and uh, determine a classification PDF that allows us to tell whether a source is a composite, uh, is of a composite nature rather than a fully fledged uh, AGN or star forming galaxy. The some simple tools that we put together, I mean, with a specific eye on a, on, a, on a radio survey that is very similar to what Mirkat will provide. I mean, it was published uh, earlier this year by a postdoc of mine. The idea is that we did, uh, not unlike what I mentioned earlier, we put together, I mean, uh, a number of astronomers. We had them, I mean, sit down, I mean, for painful weeks, I mean, to inspect, uh, I mean, many thousands, I think 10,000 uh, radio sources and to reconcile their, uh, their uh, well, their occasionally different opinions, I mean, about the nature of these very extended radio galaxies. And in so doing, I mean, we tried to uh, make the most of nearest neighbor and likelihood ratio, uh, likelihood ratio matches in such a way that uh, we could pre-select, I mean, the complicated sources that required visual inspection. And we've been somewhat successful in this. Uh, this is a student project that uh, a particularly keen student of ours has, uh, has completed uh, recently, I mean, by using uh, simple, uh, the deep learning, uh, well, a new neural network, deep network, uh, and uh, a very small uh, sample of compact FR1, FR2, and band tail galaxies. I mean, we have basically, uh, well, reproduced some, uh, uh, some of the results uh, from the literature with an increased accuracy. And, well, we recently published it a bit in a hurry, and actually Kai will be taking a look uh, at my student thesis, I hope. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we offered at some point as, an, as a reviewer. I'm not sure he got back to us as yet. And uh, <laughs> the, the, the future of this uh, experiment is to try and classify the whole first catalog and to expand, I mean, the, the training set that we have adopted. I mean, clearly, we will be looking at sources that, that have not been cherry-picked, so we will have to... I mean, contend, I mean, with a much more difficult uh, problem. And uh, crucially, I mean, evaluating the classification PDF, I mean, we stand to be one picked. I mean, most of the time, I mean, with deep learning tools will also be uh, uh, something, to, something to consider. The, 
Another project that we are uh, uh, embarking on is to use the Radio Galaxy Zoo uh, uh, developed uh, tools, I mean, to identify galaxy hosts, I mean, and apply them to the, to the Meerkat dataset. Uh, I had a student earlier this week, I mean, trying to port uh, the Claran software for our CNN uh, to Python 3, so as to be able to run it on our, uh, on our cloud. And we are working with Ivy Wong and uh, some of our collaborators in order to try and get, and get this to work, I mean, well, to reproduce the Radio Galaxy Zoo uh, results and to move on to Meerkat results. Last but not the least, uh, a student of ours is working, on, is working with Pink. Sibu Zizu will be staying here next week and hopefully start looking at how, whether, at how we can use Pink to estimate the rotation angle uh, of the galaxy jets in order to try and probe I mean, their alignment over cosmic scales. And uh, that's all I have for now. We do have, however, a big data science training program that we are, uh, where we are trying to engage with uh, artificial intelligence experts and data scientists. We have had a couple of schools, I mean, one early this year and one next week. And uh, the, the general outcome has been in surprisingly uh, positive. And uh, I would encourage you, I mean, to, to come and talk to me, I mean, in order to get involved with some of this training or with some of uh, our uh, project. I mean, both if you are interested in, uh, uh, in the astronomical side, but uh, particularly if you're interested in, the, in, in helping us out with machine learning. Thank you.